Welcome to the examination of Mikhail Tal's attacking strategy. In this video, we'll try to understand how Tal prepares the ground for his spectacular sacrifices. To do this, we'll analyze a game where Tal constantly improves his pieces, develops the initiative, and increases the pressure on the enemy position until the stage is set for a brilliant sacrifice. So, let's dive into Tal's magic. Tal starts with e4, his opponent Bilek plays the Pirt's defense, d6, after d4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, and knight f3, black plays c6, opening the queen's diagonal, taking under control the important squares, and preparing the possible advance of the b-pawn. Tal develops the bishop, targeting the f7 pawn, black develops the knight, putting pressure on e4. And now Tal starts playing aggressively. As he writes in his annotations, that was a pseudo activity because black's position is quite solid black hasn't made any mistakes and uh, white doesn't have any um, grounds for playing so aggressively but tal does it he crosses the center of the board attacking the knight after the exchange he captures with the knight attacking f7 threatening to capture but black simply castles tal castles too and after knight d7, Tal continues his unjustified aggression. f4, reinforcing the e5 knight. Queen c7, Tal develops the queen. And now it's time for black to attack white center. And the most natural way of doing that, of course, is c5. However, if black plays c5 right away, that would weaken the b5 square and knight b5 might be quite unpleasant. So before pushing the c-pawn forward, black plays a6 taking under control the b5 square and preparing c5. Besides that, black might also push the b-pawn forward. Tal occupies the half-open file, creating an immediate threat of knight takes f7. And after rook takes f7, the rook would be pinned, of course. And of course, Tal wouldn't capture uh, with his bishop right away. Instead, he would capture on e7, attacking the pinned rook for the second time, and white would win. However, black had an active way of parrying this threat. He could have played b5 with a tempo, so white doesn't have time to capture on f7 with the knight. Uh, neither uh, white has time to capture on c6, of course. He must save his bishop. And after the bishop retreats, black could have played bishop b7. Defending the c6 pawn, placing his bishop on the same diagonal with the white queen and opening way for his a8 rook to f8. And if white captures on f7, this time after rook takes f7, rook takes e7, white is ready to capture the rook, but rook f8, black would defend his rook and would be slightly better. But instead of this active defense, namely b5, black plays e6. Of course, this move also parries the threat of knight takes f7, but it's a passive move. Now Tal moves his bishop from c4, so that possible b5 comes without a tempo. Now, of course, b5 wouldn't make any sense, because white would have time simply to capture a pawn. That's why, as b5 doesn't work, black plays c5, attacking d4. Tal defends the pawn, and now it was time to think about the development of the queen side. And the most active way of doing that, again, was b5. Preparing bishop b7, which would follow with a tempo. Besides that, black is threatening c4, trapping the bishop. If white captures the unguarded rook, then bishop b7, and uh, white uh, queen gets trapped. Of course, white can get two rooks for the queen, but the black queen would prove to be much stronger than white's passive rooks. Besides that, black would have terrible threats, such as c4 trapping the bishop, or c takes d, followed by knight takes e5, after which uh, white's center would be demolished. Besides that, of course, the bishop is very strong on the long diagonal, and black can create a queen and bishop battery, creating checkmating threats on g2. But after possible b5, which was black's best option, instead of queen takes a8, Tal prepared Another queen sacrifice. As black is threatening to play c4, trapping his bishop, Tal prepared d takes c. After bishop b7, of course, attacking the queen, Tal was going to play c6. Black must capture the e5 knight, which is defending the c6 pawn. And after the exchange, 
f takes e, bishop takes c6, the white queen would be under attack, but Tal was going to sacrifice the queen for three minor pieces. After e takes f, bishop takes f3, f takes g, attacking the rook, so white do black doesn't have time to save his bishop. And after king takes g7, g takes f, the position would be extremely sharp and more or less equal. But all this was too complicated, so instead of b5, black decided to capture on d4, eliminating white's central pawn. However, that was a mistake, because before black exchanged on d4, white's dark squared bishop was bad, it was restricted by its own pawns. After the exchange, the activity of the bishop increases, and this exchange lets Tal begin his magic. Black eliminates a white's central knight, knight takes e5, and now it might seem that the most natural way to capture would be bishop takes e5, because it would follow with a tempo. However, however, that would be a mistake, because after queen b6 check king h1, bishop d7, black would play bishop c6 next move with a tempo, finishing his development, all his pieces would be very active, and black would be slightly better. So, instead of bishop takes e5, Tal captures with a pawn. And now his pawn is doomed. It's an isolated weak pawn, and sooner or later this pawn would fall. So why did Tal sacrifice this pawn? What did he get for the pawn? First, the open f file for his major pieces. The, he will put pressure on this file. Second, he kicks out the knight from f6. And on f6, the knight controlled the e4 square. And after the knight retreats, and it's forced to retreat, the e4 square will be occupied by the white knight. So, black is attacking the e5 pawn three times, while it's defended only twice. And probably black expected queen g3. So, so white would, uh, he expected white to defend this pawn. However, in this case, the white queen on g3, the bishop and the rook would be tied to the defense of this pawn. So instead of queen g3, which was passive, Tal sacrifices the, the pawn. He plays knight e4, threatening to invade f6, which will be quite unpleasant. So black must capture this pawn. And now we can see another idea behind Tal's pawn sacrifice. This leads, if black captures on e5, that leads to the exchange of the dark squared bishops, after which the dark squares on black's king side will be weakened and the black king might turn into a target of attack. Because black cannot capture on e5 with the knight, that would be a blunder, because of knight f6 check. Closing the bishop's diagonal so that it doesn't defend the knight anymore, so if black plays king uh, h8, uh, white would simply capture the knight, and if instead of king h8, black plays bishop takes f6, then of course queen takes f6, and again the knight would be lost because it cannot move, as white would simply checkmate the black king. That's why after knight e4, as black cannot capture with the knight, he captures with the bishop, and as it was mentioned, that leads to the exchange of the dark squared bishops, after which the dark squares are weakened. So, black can capture the bishop either with the knight or the queen. If he captures with the knight, then the f6 square would be weakened, because on d7 the knight defends this square. So, black decided to capture with the queen. But the queen also turns into a target of attack of the e1 rook, of course. So, Tal finishes his development, bringing into play the last piece, again with a tempo threatening to capture on d7, and after, as the knight, of course, was the uh, defender of the f6 square, after bishop takes d7, white uh, was threatening to play knight f6, check with the discovered attack on the black queen. So, to parry this threat, black plays king g7. So, black is up a pawn, but, of course, white is very active, all white pieces are very actively placed, while black still hasn't uh, finished the development of his queen side, and the dark squares on his king side are weakened. Tal plays knight d6. Now this knight is even stronger, and the queen is under attack. Queen c5 check, king h1. So 
to finish the development of the queen side, black must move the knight. Knight f6 would be a blunder, because of queen takes f6 check, followed by knight e4 with a fork, white would be up a piece. That's why, instead of knight f6, black plays knight e5, centralizing the knight with a tempo. Queen f4, attacking the knight, so with every move, Tal creates some threats. So, as the knight is under attack, black plays f6, defending the knight. But f6 now becomes weak. So, black is up a pawn and he has consolidated his position. Um, so, Tal needs to start the second wave of attack in order to increase his initiative. First, he plays rook f1, putting more pressure on the f file and tying the f8 rook to the defense of the f6 pawn. Black plays a5. The idea is to prepare rook a6, which would attack the knight for the second time and drive it away from this great square. And what to do now? Rook a6 is coming. And although white pieces are very active, it isn't clear how uh, white should continue his attack. So white definitely needs new resources, new attacking resources, and this resource is the pawn, so h4, threatening to push the pawn forward. Black plays rook a6, attacking the knight, the knight retreats to e4, attacking the queen, and also the uh, f6 pawn for the third time, that's why queen e7, defending the pawn, and h5, threatening h6 which would be extremely unpleasant. For example, if black plays a4, trapping the bishop, the bishop cannot move to a c4, of course, because the knight would capture it, Tal prepared h6 check, and after king h8, knight takes f6, black's position would collapse, because the f6 pawn was defending the knight, now the knight is unguarded, if black captures, of course, queen takes e5 would follow, with a terrible threat of the discovered check, of course, and if instead of uh, capturing the bishop, black plays uh, knight c6, saving his attacked knight, then now that the knight has left e5 and it isn't controlling the c4 square, white can play bishop c4, saving his bishop and his position would be great. White has a winning position. Because the king side is destroyed and uh, black pieces are still terribly placed, and white would continue his deadly attack. So, a4 doesn't work because white is threatening terrible h6 check. So, black must take measures against the h6 threat. But what can he do against this threat? If he captures on h5, then the g file would open, white would capture on f6 eliminating the pawn which was defending the knight, black must capture with the queen to defend his knight, but queen g3 check would follow, attacking the queen. To save the queen, black must play queen g6, but the knight would fall, and uh, of course um, white's attack would be devastating. For example, after king g8, rook takes f8 check, followed by rook d8 check, white is winning. What else? g takes h doesn't work. How else black can uh, parry the threat of h6 check? If he plays g5, that would weaken the king side even more, and after the queen retreats, white would still threaten h6 check. For example, after bishop d7, h6 check, king takes h6, rook takes f6 check was possible. If rook captures, then the rook would close the queen's diagonal, g5 would be unguarded, and queen takes g5 would be checkmate. And if, instead of rook takes f6, black captures with the queen, then of course he is losing the queen. So, in order to parry the h6 threat, black plays h6 himself. But now that the black pawn has left the h7 square, it isn't defending the g6 pawn, so the pawn is weak and Tal plays queen g3, immediately targeting this pawn. And black plays a4, attacking the bishop. And we have reached the critical position. So, Tal has developed enormous initiative. He created weaknesses. 
uh, in the enemy position. So he increased the pressure till its maximum. And that means the stage is set for a brilliant sacrifice. Now you can pause the video and try to find the sacrifice and the idea behind this sacrifice, the main motif of this sacrifice. <clears throat> So, Tal eliminates the very important pawn, which is defending the knight. This knight is black's main piece, the best piece. So, he captures on f6 with the rook and also vacates the f1 square for the second rook. If black doesn't capture the rook and takes the bishop instead, then simply rook takes f8 and after king takes f8, the knight falls White has a terrible threat of queen h8 uh, check, for example, after if black captures, let's say on a2, after queen h8 check, king f7, rook f1 check, black is losing the queen. So, after rook takes f6, black cannot capture the bishop, he must capture the rook. So, rook takes f6 followed. And now that the f6 pawn is eliminated, the pawn was defending the knight, Tal captures black's best piece, letting him capture the bishop in his turn. So, as a result of this operation, of this combination, black is up a rook. However, his rook is out of play, it cannot take part in the defense of the king side as it's closed, its way to the king side is closed by its own pawn. The bishop isn't doing anything, it's also out of play, it's a bad bishop because it's also restricted by its own pawns. This e6 pawn is blockaded by the white queen, so it cannot uh, move forward, so the bishop and the rook will remain passive until the end of the game. The second rook is pinned, that was one of the main uh, motives of this sacrifice, the pin, the terrible pin. The queen cannot move away from e7 because it must defend the rook, so black is almost paralyzed. Although he is upper rook, his position is hopeless, almost hopeless. And Tal isn't in a hurry, black cannot do anything anyways, so he simply captures a pawn, a quiet move. What to do now? How to escape from this terrible pin? If black makes the most natural uh, move, king f7, unpinning his rook, then Tal prepared simple knight takes f6, getting back his rook, and after queen takes f6, queen c7. Check was possible, and it turns out that black is losing everything. He's losing the bishop, he's losing the queen. For example, if the king moves, then of course, first white would eliminate the bishop, and after that the queen would fall too. If instead of uh, moving the king, uh, black plays queen e7, then h takes g check. If the king captures, of course, the queen would fall. So, if the king moves to e8 to defend, uh, to keep the queen defended, then queen takes uh, c8 check would lead to immediate checkmate. And finally, if instead of e8 the king moves to f6, then again the queen would be lost after rook f1 check. The king cannot defend the queen anymore. Next move, white would capture the queen. So, after a takes b, instead of king f7, which would unpin the rook but still lose, black played b6. The idea is to take under control the a5 square and prepare rook a5 attacking the queen, kicking it out, and unpinning his rook. If black manages to play rook a5, then he might be better. For example, if white makes the most natural move, you should always attack the pinned piece one more time. So if white plays rook f1, attacking the pinned rook for the third time and threatening to capture it, black prepared rook a5, attacking the queen. Of course, white can get his rook back, but after the exchanges, black prepared rook f5, white must exchange as his knight and the rook are under attack. And after the exchange, the endgame would be absolutely equal. But instead of the natural rook f1, 
Tal makes a prophylactic move. In the anticipation of rook a5, he makes a quiet move, a brilliant move, b4. Taking under control this square and retaining his terrible threat of rook f1. And there is nothing black can do to prevent this terrible threat. White is simply going to play rook f1. Then he's going to capture on f6 with the knight, getting back his rook and his attack would continue the devastating attack would continue, while the bishop and the rook would still be out of play, and the lonely queen, of course, cannot defend the king. If black plays king f7, then, as it was shown uh, previously, earlier, after knight takes f6, queen takes f6, queen c7 check, white again would win. For this reason, after b4 in this position, black resigned. And now I recommend watching a game that Tal's coach, Alexander Koblenz, considered one of Tal's most beautiful. But first, like this video and subscribe, as it's really helpful for the channel growth.